Hello, and welcome to the Bear Bush Traders Podcast. In this episode, Thor and I get into the conversation of AI and how it can affect retail traders in the future. As you know, AI has been a hot topic, especially for tech companies. Let's jump right into episode number 14, Will AI Replace Retail Trading? Hey guys, welcome back to another podcast. My name is Carlos alongside Thor Young, your host for the Bear Bush Traders Podcast. Um, Thor, I feel like we haven't done this in a while. Been a minute since we got together. At least it feels that way. Yeah, yeah. it does really feel like it's been a bit since we've done this. You know, for everyone, a little behind the scenes baseball. Sometimes what we do, because we want to make sure you're getting regular content, is if we have like an empty week, we'll record one or two episodes in a week. That way, if you know, and then so we ended up having a, a little bit of a lapse here. So Carlos and I are like, how, how do we start a podcast again? I mean, I really don't know. Um, but just <laughs> want to say hi to everybody out there. Thanks. Yeah. Our response to our last couple of uh, podcasts have been really awesome. And so we're l- really excited to come into this new kind of a topic, which, you know, Carlos and I were talking about this and we're like, man, this is a topic we've just got to cover, which is yes, like the big yes. hot topic of the day, which a year ago it was EVs. Um, you know, a little while ago, it was, you know, NFTs. And mm-hmm. there was always like yeah. this little hot button item. So what is the hot button item of today? And, and, and you said it earlier, it was AI, you know, Absolutely. and I was like, Oh, man, we got to yeah. talk about AI. So we're, we're going to do a little bit of talking about AI today, my man, Carlos, I mean, what do you think we can go a lot of directions with this AI thing? What are you thinking about? Yeah, man? it's kind of wild. We, we really can, but I think the number one question that comes up, I guess, in the different stages of trading, every time new technology comes out, and this is nothing new, right? AI is just another, uh, I don't want to say threat, but it's another uh, source of information or, or new technology that can affect trading, right? So we're going to focus on AI, not not so much the chat GPT stuff. We could talk about that because that's what pre- yeah. what a lot of what a lot of people can relate to as far as AI now. But I really want to get into is, you know, the future of AI as far as trading, you know, what does trading look like in the future? And Thor, this conversation goes back a while ago. Um, I remember about when I first started about five, six years ago, um, there was always a threat. Well, well, what if the computers are becoming better traders? They're better at what they're doing. Mm-hmm. The algos are going to beat out retail traders. And, and that's a conversation, a question that many traders have. I remember when I first started and I was, you know, saying, okay, I'm going to focus on this full time. I'm not going to start looking for a job right away. I'm going to focus on trading. There was a thought in my mind, but how long is this going to last? Is this going to be like a four-year thing? Things are getting very advanced. Our algos, can we even beat the algos at their own game, right? They're so good. They're so fast. They can react to news a lot quicker. Um, they have information they can, you know, digest and crunch in seconds, or nanoseconds or whatever. How can we beat those guys, right? Um, mm-hmm. But after doing this for a while, you realize that there's always going to be a space for retail traders, right? Absolutely. Now you, you come you come from a uh, from a tech background, right? You used to work, I believe, yeah. was at IT. So you've been on the back back side of this and seen what computers can do. So you even have that inside information on some of the stuff. You know, what's your thoughts on that? I think that you can never replace a retail trader. Well, so so for me, so so the IT background that I have, I actually worked for an options trading platform for a little yeah. while on their server side, um, and then I I ended up going more into the VoIP side of things, and then uh, servers, network architecture, stuff like that. Um, and I did that for over a decade um, before you know I, I kind of came into stock trading when my schedule really wouldn't allow um, for such an intense career. <laughs> now we we work plenty here, I guess, but you know it's it's still just much more enjoyable and it's on my terms when I work, you know, in this gig versus an IT just 24, seven, 365, you gotta, you gotta be ready, especially when you get into the upper levels of it. So, um, my experience with development, you know, first, like you were saying, when we started really what we're talking about is algorithms in the beginning. Right. And, and we start just thinking, and, and people have started to realize that there is a difference between your basic algorithm Right. Or your, your, you know, your, your computer that just triggers because you hit a certain level and what they are now calling this, you know, artificial intelligence, you know, as they're as they're as they're trying to bring it in, which is the thought that maybe there is something that is capable of of working slightly beyond its architecture. You know what I mean? Can can you know, can you program it, but can it become predictive? Now, here's the thing. Does being able to predict something make something intelligent? I, I, I can't I can't say that to be true at all. Right. Like, for right, instance, right. you can use a laser pointer pointed at a wall. And before something hits the laser pointer, you can have something move the laser pointer. Right. It's predicting that something's happening. So it's moving. Does that make it intelligent? I would say no. 
there, there's so many different things and and just to kind of put a hat on that part if there was an intelligence who programmed it who who created it in what environment was it created what rules were given to it as it was created and it's even in challenging them it's gonna start somewhere so right. whenever we talk about server-based trading systems the one thing that most programmers kind of agree upon is that the inherent biases of whoever programmed the system is going to exist within the system. This is why algorithms are emotional. They're not emotional because they're actually emotional. They're emotional because someone programmed it to act in a certain way when a certain scenario happens, which would happen to be the same way you would react if you were afraid of getting in it stopped out of a position. Right. So you can program these if then statements. But again, does that make them intelligent? And for me, I would say no. I think I, I'm kind of with you here. I think we're yeah. always I think we're always going to be outside the box. Human beings were programmed in, in whatever system and ev evolutionary concept that brought us up. Right. The thing that we were basically designed to do is break rules. Um, one of the reasons why trading is so stinking difficult is because people were actually designed to break rules. And in order to be a good trader, you kind of have to follow rules, right? So the problem why, and why I think an algorithm will never be able to predict people is because I don't even think people can predict people. Yeah, that, that is well said, my friend. <laughs> and, and I could, could not disagree with you there at all. And this is why I think like, in you know, we've seen many traders in our community that are more uh their intuition is at play i think a trader's mm. intuition is a big part of the trading pie here right so if you look at a trader you have your skills you have your and it's just you know not in any order not in any size but you have your skills you have your 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 time and seat you have your intuition you have your strategies all these things play a part i think it, Traders are more intuitive, into, they have more intuition, especially with day trading, the way we do, right? Very fast paced. You're constantly got to look, be looking at the ball, where's it moving? You got to pivot very, very quickly on certain things, right? Um, Absolutely. And I think that intuition, I, I don't think you can track that intuition on retail trading. I think that's very difficult to do, if at all even possible. Yes, you can track moods, you can track history, right? You can track um things that have happened in the past and when this happens this occurs but intuition throws everything out the window it's like that it's like that uh that that thing just are not able to quantify yeah here here's an example i have of that um and it, it's 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 a good and a bad example at the same time because technically the trader i'm going to talk about was working outside of their rule set so okay. so they, so they were rewarded for breaking rules which is naughty all right so mm -hmm. we, we we we're not happy about that uh, however um, what was interesting was, so the trader normally trades a very specific time frame, And what they have found through their statistics is that whenever they tried to trade outside of a certain time frame, they do poorly, mm -hmm. right? So, but in this one instance, they were outside of their normal time frame. but they, you know, if, if you guys follow Pyrus in the trading room, it, it just cracks me up. He, he calls it, um, the, the trade just steps up and like grabs you by the face or something like that. Like he's just <laughs> yeah, like, I yeah, just yeah. couldn't help yeah. but trade it because it had everything I want to see in a trade. So he, he takes this trade outside of time, but it, it grabbed him by the face. I mean, everything about this most productive trade he's actually ever had in his entire trading career because he took that moment. Now, the question is, if you never trade a time frame, how do you gain a statistic that you can trade in that time frame? You can't. Right. Your statistics right, right. are always going to show you're ineffective in that time frame because you don't trade that time frame. And because you trade it so infrequently, when you do trade it, of course, you're going to run a higher likelihood of loss. Yeah. Right. Yes, so what yeah. allows this to happen? Intuition. Right. An algorithm, you know, is going to always stay constrained within its time frame because it's going to say, well, I can't go out there. If I do, I have a low hit rate. Well, you don't really know if you have a low hit rate out there because you're not trading out there. It doesn't, doesn't mean you should, but this is where the trader's intuition, as you become a more evolved trader, you know, competency takes like 10,000 hours of application before you truly gain full competency in something. You know, four years, they say, you know, that's why college is, you know, like well, so much time. 
right? Yeah, it's yeah. you have to gain that. And and then there's a certain level. Once you get to where you are, you got to start making it your own and doing it your own way. And this requires you to start breaking other people's rules to figure out how it's going to work for you. You know that at BBT, we help you develop your own trade book. We don't just hand you ours. What we'll give you ours is a template, but we will right. instantly say this is what works for me. You need to modify it so it works for you. And so now you're going to go up to an algorithm and you're going to give the algorithm the market. And then you're going to say intuit this and make it your own. It just, I, I don't see that being a thing. And, and if it is, and, and let me bridge this, what if it does work? What if there is AI? I don't think it changes anything, right? right because right. the reality is, is it's volume, baby. The same thing that's worked since 1907. If you're paying attention, <laughs> VPA, volume and price analysis, if you're not using it, I don't care if you're a pattern trader, tape trader, edge trader, momentum trader, or whatever, go get you a copy of Anna Cooling's volume and price analysis. You know, you can always grab yourself a copy of this guy over here. It's got a pretty That's good right. volume in it. Right, <laughs> for those, get yourself for those a on VPA. Audio, Thor is showing <laughs> his, uh, his book, which <laughs> you, you can pick up on Amazon. <laughs> you know, get yourself, get yourself a nice cop of volume and price analysis book, Livermore, Wyckoff, me, Humphrey Neal back towards the 1920s. I mean, it's stuff has been taught since forever. And the thing is, is no matter what these AI algos do, they're going to generate volume when they do it. Right. And so as long as you're paying attention and that's where a, volume is where a retail traders edge is, right? We're, we're in the micro time frame. Yeah. We can watch yeah. the volume and instantly make decisions, right? We can see the tape. We can see the order book, all these things, the algorithms are going to use. Right. AI is going to use them just the way we are. If anything, maybe AI makes the market easier. You know, if it AI comes in and starts put, <laughs> brings in more volume, puts more orders on the book in a more obvious way. I mean, AI doesn't care. AI is making money. Maybe it makes it easier. Who knows? This could be the, AI yeah. could be the best thing that ever happened to a retail trader for all I know. Right. Uh, We're just plankton anyway. Right. If, if they're going right. to move price, I'm down. I'll hop on board and ride this we're, way. We're in, we're in for the ride, that's for sure. Yeah, um, you know. One of the things that um, and there's a study that uh, Andrew and and I believe uh, a lot of the PCT uh, Capital team did, um, and based on the five minute ORB. Have you seen that news article that came out? It's a yeah. five minute ORB where they, they did like a um a I was gonna say a background check, but not a background check. They do a back testing on this five minute ORB strategy and how successful it was and whether you know it's we were successful over time. And and it's a great article. I'm not going to give you guys the answer. I want you guys to go check it out. I'm going to put the link on the bottom of the show notes. I want you guys to go in it and see how great this article is. But there's something there that that doesn't uh, account for it is the intuition part of it. And I'm a five-minute ORB trader. So I, that's my one and only, not my one and only, but that's my number one trading yeah, It's your strategy. bread and butter trade. It's my bread and butter. And and that's the second one is a, it's a far second. We're talking about you know reversals, which I'm not great at. Uh, and one of the things that I noticed is by trading the ORB for so long, is that if I were to write a program on the perfect ORB setup, it will probably lose more mm. often than not. If I write a program saying, "Hey, I want you to take a partial at one R," you know, if it, as you as you make a new high and you pull back a little bit from the high of that candle, take another partial. Just the way I trade. But there's yeah. something there that is not going to, I'm not going to be able to program, which is, you know, how do I see the price action building? And if I yeah. see, okay, you know what? We, this type of market, we're not doing so good. The last few days we pulled back and I should take a partial here. Um, the, the price action doesn't look as strong. There's a lot of intuition that I put into this strategy. That, it's a lot of variable change, right? Yes. So and that's, yes. maybe that's the other reason I think it'd be so hard for some of these algos, right? Because it's, it's not, each each variable starts a chain reaction of variables across your trading system. You know, yeah. it, if it's yeah. in, if it's at the wrong price, I have to do this with it. If it's at this price, I have to do this with it. Right? If it opens here, I yeah. got it. this. I'm looking for it to come here. If it opens here, how far do I expect it to go? I really don't right. expect it to go any further than this. Why? Because that's where the topped before. Now these are things you can program in, but again so many with so many variables, you know, it's, that it can yeah. all that, you know, you tip one and it's a domino effect of all these different things. And again, even if it does figure out how to intuit that, 
I don't think it even changes anything. Right. <laughs> exactly. So this is why I feel you know? like, okay, yeah, you can you can back test a lot of stuff. You can back test it. But um, if you are very, if you have a lot of intuition and you have a lot of decision making in your trade, like we do with day trading, especially that first uh, hour or two of the market open where everything is extremely volatile, there's a lot of things that are going to be very difficult to track as, as far as variables. So I'll give you another example. Like when, if the stock, it goes against me before I take a partial, if I'm right on my stop, but I see that the price action is showing a lot of strength with the way the, the candles is, are moving, I'm going to give it a little bit of more time, right? Mm -hmm. And Agua's just going to say, no, yeah. we hit our stop, we're out. He's, they're not going to be able to recognize, okay, what is the price actually doing? What are the, uh, the uh, what's going on with everything else as far as data? So maybe it could be done. I find it very difficult. And if it can be done, it'll be such a few a number it'll of, be interesting to see too because yeah. like you know the, the market itself right you know talking about what you're talking about just they're yeah. piggybacking the market is designed to entice participation right correct, that's what it correct. does why does it go a little too low why does it go a little too high right it's just going out of these making this new higher making this new low because it's trying to see who it can freak out you know yeah, what i mean yeah. who it can get to entice but it's not there's not a metric for it you know correct, what I mean? The correct. market makers don't even know when they're going to move. You mm -hmm. know, they've got targets, they've got ranges. And, and I know this because I'm fortunate enough to get to have conversations with a couple of them every now and again. Yeah. yeah. You know, but I mean, it's 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 not like, you know, whenever you see like a Peter Tuckman or something, they come on there and he, he comes on there and he goes, wow, the market down 400 points today. Like Like the dude did not know at the beginning of the day that we were going 400 points down today. Right. He yeah. thought it might be weak, but he was his mind was blown. Right. He went where the demand went. Right. The market makers go where the demand, you know, is and where it goes. They're getting they're making money off of transactions. Right. They're yeah. not they're not trying. Yeah. So it's just, you know, you get all of this country. So it's just like, wow, you know, seeing this, this all of this activity. So maybe the AIs, you know, help with that. But going back with your five minute ORB and stuff like that, you know, too market cycle changes right like if there's ai what happens when we move into a different market cycle you know, like you know five minute orb performs better in a in a you know in a stock that Which generically carries yeah. a, a trend for the day right so yeah. it, it helps to get a, a stock that's a trending stock you know you can get it on you know like for instance i like um for my favorite one of my opening trades is kind of similar to yours um which is it's it's it comes down to s3 basically where vwap is there Right. Mm -hmm. So it comes down, holds VWAP, holds S3, you know, so it's kind of like combining a pivot trade with a five minute ORB with a with a falling angel, Brian, you know, Pezum's momentum trade. You know, you get this pullback to the average price and then you hold and you make that new. If there's a strong order book and you get lots of volume there, I mean, it's it's an insta squeeze. I mean, it's it's going to go. There's no question about that trade. It's It's a super strong trade. But I can also make that decision, too, which is how much money am i willing to risk at this exact moment at this exact range and when i do what expectation do i actually have for distance when am i gonna partial because you can't partial too soon you can't partial too late you know it's like porridge you got to partial just right you know you got to wait for it to spike in volume up near the your target recognize that we're rolling over our averages not get faked out because they're trying to do that Right. And then get out at the right time, because if you can't do that, your losers add up and outweigh your winners. Right. Because you got to be able to hold uh, uh, properly. hundred percent. There are so many variables that it, that AI is going to have to overcome just to be equal to what we're doing. And again, yeah, I don't know yeah. if it hurts. You know, if anything, maybe AI is as good of a day trader as I am. And if they are, that means they're going to follow all the rules. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to they're going to yeah, they're yeah. going to trade proper risk. And, you know, hey, bring them, I, you know, I'll. I'm, I'm yeah, you, you, you just <laughs> added a, a whole nother level of complexity that we didn't even tap into yet. And you're right. And that's just one example. There's so many more. So, so it just makes you think about going back to just regular day trading and for retail the, for trading. For the record, if you are yeah. looking to program an AI, um, if you could use this system to program yeah. it, the futures already work using Camarilla based methods. Whoever's out there who's like farming this video for ideas, mm -hmm. I'm just saying program your, that way I don't have to change how I trade. 
Um, yeah, we we yeah. can we can just go off the <laughs> <laughs> go off, go off your book. Absolutely, everyone out there in the, on the on the audio only version. I'm showing my book again and just saying, you know, you make this easy on me. If you're going to program an AI, use my system, and then I don't have to change anything. Then you know exactly what's going on. That would um, be real nice of you. Hello, friends. I hope you're enjoying this conversation as we are midway through this episode. Do not forget to submit a rating or a thumbs up on whatever platform you're listening in. And most importantly, we would love to hear from you at podcast at bearbootraders.com. So send us the emails or your comments, suggestions and questions and we would love to get back to you and maybe even feature some of those comments and questions in our future episodes. I also want to remind you there are tons of tools available at tradingterminal.com. So head over there for scanners, news, calendar, live simulator, plus a replay simulator that can help you improve your game. Head over to tradingterminal.com to take advantage of all those trading tools. Now let's jump back into this AI conversation. But it just goes to show you as a retail trader, you know, how much information everything we're talking about is basically our thought process in a matter of seconds. So how yeah. much information we are processing and it takes time to build to that point. And Tons. I think if you're day trading on, on shorter timeframes, there's, there has to be a level of intuition to be successful. I, I don't think, I, yeah. and I, I could be wrong. This is not something that's factual. This is just my opinion only guys. So don't kill me in the comments or that's kill me in the comments either way. <laughs> yeah, kill us in the comments, whatever. Yeah. Well, how do you feel? I mean, what do you think about that? But I mean, this is why we use SIM, right? So we can build that intuition without Absolutely. exposing our capital at the same Absolutely. time. Absolutely. At the end, I think with experience, that becomes better and better. There are times I see, you know, uh, the best trader in the world that I know, Andrew, which is, uh, by the way, on top of the world, uh, close to on top of the world as he's climbing climbing Mount Everest. Literally. Uh, I, yeah, I think I, he. I heard, <laughs> it's jumping topics a little bit here really quick. I think I heard by Saturday, he should be, uh, you know, hitting the summit, which you know, so oh, good luck to him. You know, um, happy thoughts and and positive vibes this way, guys, and prayers. Always. Because uh, it's very dangerous. I'm hearing some of the stuff that happens and, you know, you start looking things up and it's not all, uh, you know, uh, clear and blue skies up there, right? So yeah. um, all well ADHD moment here because you brought it yeah. up and I'm sorry to do this. I opened people, the door. Go ahead. Go for it. You do know that there's a person, there, the rope fixer job just has my mind blown right now. Absolutely. That there is a Sherpa or someone and their entire job is when that rope that gets everyone to the top no longer is a rope. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> they put it back. Like, oh, my that gosh, is, I can't even it's imagine. Wild. It's absolutely wild. And, I hope and there was getting a... paid. I, I mean, I know Andrew's, you know, with the helicopter and all that. I'm sure it's all pretty, pretty pricey up there. But, man, I hope these life, a life insurance policy um, being... God bless all you guys, man. It's, Keep it's my boss wild. safe up there, please. You Absolutely. Know, prayers. Come on now. <laughs> and there, there was one one Sherpa that's been up. It's like a number, his number 26 time that he summit. So he just summit last week, right? The first Sherpa to go up number 26 time up there. That's incredible. Getting back to, to the, uh, the topic here is that one of the best traders we know, obviously, being on top of the world, which is mentioned, is Andrew. So Andrew, he does trade sometimes that are clearly are not in his uh, trade book, right? There are clearly 100% intuitive trades that he took, you know, intuition. He said, you know, I've seen this setup plenty of times. He might not be able to draw a whole trade book around it, but he says, hey, this is going to go this way. And we ask him why sometimes, and he'll say, he'll tell us, guys, I just had this intuition that this was going to happen, right? He might not be able to quantify right there. So that's a big part <clears throat> of the way he no, trades. No, he'll specifically say that. He'll say, this yeah. might not be the best trade, but I'm going... Yeah. You know, and, and whenever, and, and, it, and it's so nice for him to preface that way and to be honest, you know, because he needs to grow. He needs to try Correct. something new. But you've seen him evolve in such an interesting way, right? You've seen him go from, I know when I first started BBT, like, you know, you and me like a half a decade ago, basically at this point, mm -hmm. you know, you he was a small trader, very regimented, very yes, let's strict. Wait, let's wait five exact, minutes. Let's do this. Wait five right, minutes. Right only trade a certain amount of risk, right? And then you saw over time, as he gained competency, as he mm -hmm. gained his confidence and his ability to into it, I really think was what you're saying, and his ability yeah, to just yeah. read the market, right? Not, not think about what could happen, but as you gain, as a retail trader, I guess you could say, you gain this ability to live in a different world, which isn't a what could, it's a what is. Right. Yes. So when I when yeah. I read the order book, the reason why my hit rate is high and uh, is because I'm reading what is happening in the market. Now, that doesn't mean I'm always right about the direction, but it means I'm right a lot because I'm I'm not really concerned about when, why, where 
in a while, right? I'm just, what is happening right now? We're along. So I'm long, right? Mm -hmm. So, and, and, yeah. and, and, you know, so Andrew, you've seen this, you know, I, and I recognize this now because I've gone through a similar evolution in my trading, right? Where it's, you know, you kind of get to a certain level to where you're no longer quite as bound by the regiment of your rules and, and you start allowing your intuition to kind of take over some of the decision making process. Because again, like you're saying, it's, it's, it's muscle memory. You've seen the five minute ORB, the volume that comes with it, the way the order book looks, the way the participation comes in, the, you know, how the second minute looks versus the third minute, the, these things that give you these, these things that like, you know, you've seen it so many times you, you don't, you don't need a, you don't need a guide. You know yeah. what I mean? You don't need to yeah. sit down and look at something and say, okay, do I have this? Do I have this? And do I have this? You just look at it and, and, like a lightning bolt, you just go, yeah, I got it all or nope, don't have it. Right. Yeah, and you can make yeah. that decision so easy, flip through multiple charts, you know, and say, okay, these are the four tickers I'm looking at it. Do any of these have my setup? No. Moving on. Right. Stop. I wait. I don't trade. I got to wait for later. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's, it, I don't know. Again, does AI get to that point? I suppose you could get a rough AI, but I still don't think it's going to be intelligence. I, I don't I don't know I don't even know what intelligence is to be honest. If you try and put that in there, I don't even know if we're intelligent. Yeah, but it's, you know we got something going on. But I I definitely don't yeah. think there's an artificial one. You know what I mean? I I just think that's going to be a really strong algorithm that can do some really cool things. But I just I don't ever really see it gaining life. I guess no. we can go having that either, intuitive right? uh, mindset that a human can have, right? And and this is a conversation. I went to Savannah for a couple of days for a long weekend with the boys, and we had an amazing time. Savannah's amazing. It reminded me a little bit of your oh, town, uh, I love you know, with, Savannah, with, the, man. with the tours and everything. Far. Yeah, not too far. It was it was a lot of fun, and we we did it. Love we we, we tear that town apart, and we did everything there. Um, and and one of the things that we had a deep conversation about AI, right? And some uh, part of the group felt one way that is that it is intelligence. Another group felt that it was, and I was in this group that it's just very advanced if and then statements, you know, to the point yeah. that they get so advanced that it can provide what is, might seem like a, a, an artificial intelligence, right? But I really would love to hear from you guys on this. So please, in the comments, I want to yeah. know what you feel. Do you think it's actual intelligence or just a a very advanced, confusing, complex if and then, then statements that at the end of at all, end up in zeros and ones, right? <laughs> At the end yeah, of yeah. So, and then um, someone's going to come in there. I already know this one. Someone's going to come in there. Well, what is a person? Aren't you just if, then, and, 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 and statements? Let's get into and, it. And let's that's why I predicate with, I'm not sure if we're intelligence technically. Um, so, um, <laughs> let's so, tear it up for sure. So what, um, so what is intelligence is, is intelligence, the ability to constructively think into it. I think into it really kind of it for me is, it, it is that hard to replicate like like for instance i think an animal is intelligent right yeah. oh, like, absolutely. like like, absolutely. like yeah. more intelligent than a computer can be right for for the record like i think my dog mm -hmm. although maybe one i have two shih tzus they're actually my mom's but one is significantly more intelligent than the other one and you can just tell by looking at them i mean it's hilarious um but one of them's just a little bit brighter than the other one it's okay you throw a ball one brings it back the other one just goes what's that it's okay, right? We didn't, they didn't, not all created equal. Um, but you, but even still at this level, this is, you know, this is something that it, it is, it's, it's got an intelligence. Like it, it just, man, it's so hard to explain like, like, like this topic in that way. But it's, it's not like, I don't want to be like biblical. Like it's like a soul or a life kind of thing. Although there is a little bit of that to it too, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. but, but there, there's just something, uh, French, like je ne sais quoi, right? Like the, I don't know what, right. It's like an X factor. Like there's a, there's a breath of life that exists that, you know, gives you an edge and makes you special, right. It, 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 it gives you Absolutely, something man. that yeah. cannot be artificially recreated. Right. I, and I, and I just don't believe that. it can be. So, um, and, yeah. and, and that might be a dumb opinion. I don't know. It is just an opinion, obviously. So, but, um, but for me, it's, I don't, I don't think an AI is ever going to be able to take in all of the factors that it takes. For instance, fear and greed, like really being able to tell when the market's afraid, not selling afraid. 
right? Like when you can yeah, really yeah. tell that because of this news event and this news event and this news event and this volume and this sector selling and this sector selling and all of these and, things happen. And with all it that, it takes us like 10 moderators at Bearable Traders to grab all this stuff in right. a quick fact, you know? And, and, and if, and if we can grab the moves of what's it, whatever's on the internet, right? Cause that's what Chad GPT does. It was able to grab all the information on the internet, process it very quickly. You still don't know what the retail trader is going to do when it come when they get right. to this uh to this keyboard here. You don't right, know what true. I'm going to press. That's the other thing. You have right. I think no that's what we started off with, right? Too that is not right? recorded is, anywhere. People don't do what people are supposed <laughs> yeah, to do. So yeah. how are you going to know what we're going to do? We don't even know what we're going to yeah. do. Yeah, so it, it's 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 going to be very tough, guys. So if you're thinking that, hey, and we've spoken to people that have been trading for much more longer than we have at a very mm -hmm. higher level at this point, twenty plus years. And they, they their their answer is always is you know there will always be a space for a retail trader, that is yeah. never going to go away. No matter how much computer power you throw at it, the retail trader will always be uh there always be a spot for retail traders. And if you think about it, if algos computers AI if they get to the point where they're able to predict everything, the market will it's just not going to move. Yeah, it, it's just well, that not would be the move. thing, right? Yeah, I mean the thing how is an AI, how is an AI going to predict my YOLO trade? You know what I mean? I mean, you're, you 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 can't yeah. you don't know when yeah. I'm gonna do that. You don't know when I'm gonna just yeah. go stupid and 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 just hold, you know you know being funny aside, right? But like I just these are things that just happen. Like sometimes you're looking at the order book and all of a sudden there's just a giant sell that hits and you're just like, yeah. why? Because someone yeah. hit a button, right? right. Like someone right. decided at that moment it was time. How do you predict that moment? You don't, right? You you can't. You just have yeah. to watch and pay attention. Okay, now they're selling, right? So there's and, just and over so time, many things yeah. like that. Over time, that intuition guy gets better and better. And I strongly believe that if you're day trading like we are, and we, we do both, right? I know you do long-term swinging stuff too. I do as well on my TD account. But on Dash Trader Pro, Intact, the brokers, we're doing all our day trading. And when it comes to day trading, I think the level of intuition is a lot higher. On my long-term stuff, I buy, set it, forget. I know it's a good price, a good value. Mm -hmm. I like this company. I want to hold this for 10 years, no problem. If I can sell it in five, great. There's not a lot of thinking in that. It's not a lot of intuition in that. It's just all data. AI yeah. should be able to do toss that very quickly. Toss me a quickly. dividend. You know, toss me a dividend and see what yeah. happens. You know? AI should, there's, there's tools now that can do that easily. Um, but when it comes to day trading, these fast paced environment, I think it's a lot more that needs to be uh, uh, quantified. A lot of intuition needs to be, uh, take, that needs to take place before you can make those moves, right? A, a so. good example, I, I'm a range trader, right? So I, yeah. I've, I've been doing really great in this market because it's choppy. Right. But in yeah. any one given day, my swing trades stink for the most mm -hmm. part. Right. Because most of yeah. my swing trades have been locked in position. They're just they're not really they're going not moving, down, but yeah. they're also yeah. not really going up. They're just right. moving sideways. Right. Because we're not going anywhere. Right. right. So we're uh, but, you know, but I'm making a ton of money day trading because when the price opens, is, I yeah. let it sell down to the bottom of the range. I buy. I let it go to the top of the range. I sell. I let it go to the bottom of range, I buy, right? So, but it's, you know, I know what kind of a day because based upon my systems and my experience, which days are more likely to be trending running days versus which days are likely to be choppy days. And I have strategies outlined for each type of environment, right? Yeah, I have bear yeah. strategies, bull strategies, and what I call kangaroo strategies, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm ready for every market condition and I can identify the market conditions based upon participation, order book, volume, order book structure, you know what I mean? All of these different things and all of that has to happen in a, in a split second. And yeah. once all that happens, the market changes its mind, right? So, cause you can, you can, you can, we call them book flips. You can actually watch the market change its mind, right? And, and say, nope, you know what? Actually, thanks to the Fed speaker, I'm bullish now, right? And the mm -hmm. whole market yeah. goes bullish, yeah. right? So whatever they build, it has to be able to handle you. The only way to, you'd have to grow it. You know what I mean? I don't think you could actually construct it. I think you would have to grow it. And I think it would take 40, 50, 100 years, right? Like like mm -hmm, you and me, mm -hmm. it took us 30 or 40 years. I think you would have to grow an AI from infancy to where it is now. If you were going to yeah, build a yeah. proper one, you would, you would have to build it and allow it to experience. Because that's the other thing AI can't quantify. AI can't quantify Good your point. experience. Yeah, AI right. didn't work corporate like you worked corporate. AI doesn't have kids, right? AI don't got a wife. You know, AI don't have to put food on the table, right? AI doesn't make all of these different decisions that are made by somebody with a life, 
That's what I was, that's Emotions. what I was trying to Emotions. quantify yeah. before, right? Because an AI doesn't have a life. And because it doesn't have a life, it doesn't have anything worth living for, right? Where you do, right? You have a life. You have something worth living for. You have your life that's worth living for. You have your wife. You have your children. You have your family. You have trips to Savannah, right? You have things in your life. Like I have my wife and my children, right? And you know, thing, you know, I, I consider them when I take a trade, I don't trade crazy because I know I have to feed them. Right. So these yeah, are, these yeah. are all my life is what gives me the intrinsic ability to, to, to do these in my experience. So if you're truly going to have an AI that could compete, not even compete, equate us and that experience, you would have to build its architecture quite literally from infancy and, and raise it through a life and, and, and grow it through a life. Right. And yeah, not yeah. screw it up in the process. Yeah. Right? Which is going to be extremely difficult to do. Gonna, <laughs> and that like, is, it, it all goes wouldn't well. Wouldn't it piss you off if you raised AI for 30 years and it didn't want to be a day trader? Like what if you raise it and it goes, mom, I want to be a guitar player. Yeah. And you're yeah, like, yeah. dude, I raised you to be a day trader. He goes, Hey, I'm AI. I, I want to play guitar. I want to, yeah, I want to yeah. it. Right. So so my, my whole thing is like, if you were even going to get in an AI, if AI is an artificial, if it's actually intelligence, who knows if it even wants to day trade? Right. Right. You could race it to be a day trader. It could decide it wants to um, go kayaking. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, man. Right. So it's, it's a great conversation. And we can talk about this for hours. I know right. we did in Savannah. It was it was a big part of our conversation alongside everything else, especially in the mornings when things were quiet and relaxed. We're sitting here having coffee and AI was a big part of the conversation, especially we're for those uh, cyber dying systems. You know, that all yeah, makes things yeah. a little turn of uh, action. And Chat GPT is probably one of the the uh, tools that you can get your hands on right now. If you haven't played around with with Chat GPT, definitely Google it. It's a it's a lot of fun, and the best way uh, to to think about it is think of an assistant. I think of Chat GPT as an assistant, right? So sometimes I say, you know what, this is what I will do. I will start searching for this and this and this. I'll just have it do it. So there are some things that I'm I'm testing with it that are actually pretty good. You know, um, some people say it's a glorified uh, search engine. In a way, it is. But think about sure. it as an assistant and say, hey, look for this, look for this, that matches with this, and I want it to be this within this. And you're able to do some pretty cool stuff. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's just, for me, it's a lot of if and then statements that are Super being aggressive together. filter. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Friends, but this has been... Cool. Yeah, and it can definitely and it can definitely get for it. But you know, to conclude out and kind of write this thing out, do I think AI is, is going to take over uh, retail? Not anytime soon. No. Um, no. If if it even does, so. if it even gets there, I think the effort they would, you know, we haven't had the technology long enough for AI to grow in AI the way it would need yeah. to be grown to be yeah. competitive. Like like I'm saying, it's good 30, 40, 50 years, hundred years. It's going to take to properly mature in AI. Right. And, so and who even knows? if it is going to be a thing, probably not in our lifetime. What will right. we'll yeah. one will we'll, we'll, one that would compete? And again, worst case scenario, if it does exist, it's volume. You know, right, I still think it yeah. I think I think retailers yeah. benefit from it in the long run. I think it creates better, more predictable market conditions if that's the case. Yeah. Um, absolutely. So absolutely. Let it roll. Bring on the AI, I guess. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Friends, this has been a great conversation. Um, we we want to hear from you. I'm definitely going to be looking forward to some comments. So take the time to send us a comment here on YouTube. Uh, if you're watching on a podcast, you can always uh, reach us at podcast at bearbootraders.com. So send us an email there. I actually want to put together our, one of the episodes in the future. We want to bring a, a couple of members. We had um, we had Susan last week. We're going to bring another member maybe next week. I'm not going to say his name because I haven't confirmed with him yet, but we'll bring someone else from the BBT family. And I also want to have a, a show, me and Thor want to have a show, uh, answering some of your questions. So if you have questions in regards to trading, uh, psychology, any other episodes that we have had in this podcast, send me an email, uh, podcast at bearabletraders.com with your question. And, and I want to be able to uh, have an episode just answering some of the questions. So make sure we're connecting with you guys. Yeah, absolutely. 